Hello everyone, Fabio Cerone here, Managing Director for the Telco Industry Business Unit for the MIA region at AWS. So today with us, we will have Mark Ruan, Chief Network Officer at DISH. So Mark has been working now for more than 20 years in the telco industry, covering different executive roles, spanning from R&D to product management to operations in different countries like Finland, France, US. Hey Mark, it's really great to have you with us today. Super excited. Hey, thank you, Fabio. And uh, thanks to the Amazon team for the great work we're doing together. Happy to be with you today. So before we dive into the 5G cloud native uh, network, why don't you provide uh, an overview about DISH for the audience? So DISH uh, is a connectivity uh, brand in the US and uh, we have acquired uh, Spectrum to deliver 5G technology uh, across uh, the, all the consumer and enterprises in the US. Yeah, hey, Th thank you for that. Thank you, Mark. Uh, you know, I think it would be great to start uh, with your vision. So, which is your vision about 5G cloud native networks and how you are bringing this to real life uh, in DISH? So we're lucky at DISH because we have this uh, 5G project at a time when the technology allows us to go cloud native. Um, cloud native means uh, for us uh, scalability. We can uh, you know, grow and uh, shrink the network when we need. It means uh, bringing new software uh, very fast. It means uh, um, having access to a large uh, dish uh, data lake and use um, all the machine learning, the automation, the analytics uh, to uh, steer the network and also to provide uh, advanced content for people using our network. So uh, 5G is, has been designed uh, to, to use cloud native technology. So that's a perfect timing when it comes to uh, trying to construct and build a network uh, for the US that would be cloud native. Yeah, great insights. Really great. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. So I think next I would love to hear from you why you are doing so. So which are the key benefits both from uh, a technology and commercial standpoint while moving to cloud native? So we uh, started with the project uh, a few years back and we had the ambition to go cloud native. So we've been uh, using cloud uh, native uh, software and testing it for quite uh, some time now in the last 18 months, two years. And we've been impressed by uh, the speed at which you can bring new software, at the, the speed at which you can test, uh, you can experiment, uh, this, and also the capability to automate. Uh, we are bringing all these software from different partners and vendors, and uh, our ambition is that everything is automated uh, through pipelines, so that um, if you have a new idea, if you have a correction, you can just press a button and it's being deployed across the network um, in a very secured and uh, automated way. Uh, we also have access to uh, uh, data, um, you know, the one of the attributes of a cloud native network is that you see what's happening deep into the network, which is not the case of the existing 4G and 5G networks in the US. So um, we've the access to the data we can uh, steer and we can uh, design a lot of new services because we know what's happening everywhere. Great. I think totally, totally aligned. As you, as you know, Mark, uh, uh, we have been working backward from three key requirements that we have been hearing a lot from you and from other leading service providers. Number one is automation. So to make sure that we will deliver on the promise of fully automated cloud native 5G networks. Number two is observability. To unlock the possibility for preventive maintenance and automatic troubleshooting to get your operation costs down. Number three is to reduce the cost of technology while increasing the performance of the technology. And we are delivering on that promise through our cutting edge ARM-based technology in our Graviton2 chipset. Now, what I think is extremely relevant is that we are executing on this working backward exercise together with the set of partners that you have selected uh, uh, to execute on your program. So I think it would be great if you could share with the audience who these partners are and which benefits are you expecting from them and in particular from uh, AWS. So we've been through a, a pretty long journey of selecting partners. Uh, we were very uh, precise in what cloud native means. Um, automation, uh, but also the way the software is written. It has to be brand new software based on what we call microservices. And the architecture has to fulfill a lot of requirements. Uh, a number of partners uh, met those requirements 
and uh, we were happy to select them. So, I mean, it's a long list, but uh, you can think of the Nokia's, the Oracle, the IBM, Matrix, Mavenir, um, and uh, many other uh, software vendors uh, that are here with us, putting their software on top of AWS and uh, using leveraging all the services that uh, we have uh, with AWS on the cloud. Yeah, hey, yeah. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for the insights, Mark. Really helpful. So I would love now to move to different subject, which is kind of job zero for all of us, which is security. Now, while moving to cloud native, what's your mental model and your approach to security? So because we have a software defined network and a cloud native network, actually we can embed security at a lot of places and we can automate uh, the testing and, uh, and the checks um, of the network, which we do through, uh, when we inject new software, we have uh, uh, very thorough pipelines to check the security. But also live, uh, we can uh, check and, and measure, uh, because we, we observe what's happening in network, we can measure anything that is related to security. But even more than that, because it's fully automated, as soon as we have some security concerns, we can isolate and we can uh, steer the traffic in different ways so that the security concern is isolated from the network and from uh, um, the traffic that we carry. Yeah, thank you, Mark, really helpful. Uh, you know, I think we share a common mission here as an industry, which is to make 5G impactful for uh, the adjacent industries to the telcon and uh, ultimately to the consumers. What I see in Europe is a big traction in terms of uh, industry-specific use cases that will leverage uh, the key currency from 5G, which is low latency. So I see a great opportunity for service providers to address this need with fully managed 5G private networks delivering a recipe, which would be industry-specific, that will leverage the combination of 5G together with the distribution of the cloud. On the other hand, we are working with a number of partners, Verizon, KDDI, SKT, and Vodafone in Europe till now, who has launched just last June, to deploy our distributed public edge cloud computing, which is Waveland. And uh, it's amazing for me, it's still early days, but the level of interest that this created in our community of developers, it's huge. And they will invent on our behalf those use cases that we cannot even invent, imagine, and this will help you guys to monetize 5G. So I would really love to hear from you, Mark, uh, which do you think are the key benefits for enterprise customers and for consumers coming from cloud native 5G? So for enterprises, uh, it's pretty simple. You know, they want to have their own network. So I, I like to say that we're building a network of networks where uh, sub networks uh, can serve different requirements. And if I am an enterprise, um, I have a certain business, I have certain devices. They could be cars, they could be drones, uh, it could be inventory in a factory. I want to understand how these uh, uh, assets are moving. I want to know where they are. I want to understand if there is uh, uh, some, uh, some uh, barcodes that I need to be able to have access to. So all these can be managed by a sub-network that would be designed for that specific enterprise. So if you are an enterprise, all of a sudden, um, this new 5G network gives you the keys to access to your devices, your assets. And of course, once you have access, um, you, can, you can design new services, you can think of new optimizations, you can think of new automation, of new way of producing and, uh, and shipping your services. So that's really what it brings. And because it's uh, cloud native, um, we can separate those sub-networks into very specific enterprise-grade uh, uh, networks with different capabilities. Some can be very fast, some can be very cost competitive, some can be extremely secured, some have, can have all these attributes all together. So they, there are there is an infinite number of flavors. Yeah, totally aligned. Yeah, and then uh, I think it would be great now to move a bit more on the execution phase. I think uh, we would love to hear from you. Where are you? Which is the status of the program and the key milestones ahead of us? Yeah, so I'm, I'm driving the technology uh, at Dish. So we publish regularly the selection process and where we stand with our vendors. We announced recently. Uh, that uh, we have now uh, selected a partner for orchestration. And that tells you how far we are, you know, uh, orchestration is something very unique, nobody has ever done, which goes to uh, uh, segmenting into sub-networks. We, when we uh, announce vendors, it means we've gone through thorough tests 
with them. We have experimented their technology, and uh, we know it's suitable to us. So by, by tracking what we announce, you see uh, what technology we're testing and how far we are. And as I said at the beginning, uh, we've been impressed with uh, the flexibility and the power of uh, cloud-native solutions. Uh, we've been impressed by the speed at which we can adopt it and uh, consume it. Uh, so that has been a pretty exact, exciting technology uh, journey for us. And, uh, and I'm sure we'll discover much more and have much more fun with all that uh, great new technology. So Mark, really, really thank you for being with us today. Thank you for all these insights. Thank you for uh, your great leadership, uh, taking your vision of 5G cloud native networks into reality at DISH. Uh, what I think is most important for the telco industry is to have a program now, which is bringing this vision into reality with concrete milestones, concrete roadmaps from AWS, from DISH, and from all the partners that you have selected. And I can't wait to see in the next weeks and months we learning from each other and delivering on those commitments for fully automated 5G networks turned into reality. I can't wait to bring these lessons learned and these benefits and scaling this up all across the telco industry to all the other service providers that are really looking at you as an example. So said that, thank you to the TM Forum for hosting us in this fantastic event. I wish you all a fantastic uh, Telco Transformation World 2021. And uh, once again, Mark, thank you so much for being with us today.